Ultra Engine unlocks the full power of your GPU to deliver up to 10 times faster performance for your game. In this video, I'm going to talk about PBR lighting and environment probes. Now, lighting with physically based rendering involves a lot of components. And we're going to start with an empty scene with no lighting and build things up one step at a time so that you can see the effect that each component has as we add it. Now the first thing we're going to do is set the skybox here. And now we have a background. Our scene is still pitch black. There's no lighting whatsoever, but at least we can see the sky in the background. Now we're going to enable direct lighting. I have this directional light here already set up and it's just hidden right now so you can't see it. So I'll uncheck this. And now you can see the effect that the direct lighting alone has. This looks kind of like game engine technology from a couple of generations ago. Now what we used to do in order to get rid of that uh, pitch black, those pitch black shadows, we would add some ambient light. And you do have that, that option in Ultra. You can see it's just completely flat. Uh, but we we actually generally don't want to use this. You can if you need it for something special, but that's not actually how we do things with a modern renderer. In modern 3D rendering, we have something called physically based lighting. And this gives us accurate surface reflections like we would see in real life. We're going to set a um, two cube maps here. One is the diffuse cube map, and I'll show you the effect that has. Now we have this soft lighting that appears everywhere, not just, um, not just where the direct lighting is hitting the surface. And then we also have another map for specular reflections. Basically, this makes things reflective. So metal surfaces will reflect the sky, and it looks pretty good. Now this looks a lot better than what we started with, but it doesn't look quite right. You'll notice this, uh, this model here is reflecting the sky around it, even though it's underneath this, this uh, enclosure. If we bring it out here, yeah, that looks correct. But if it's hidden away under or behind or inside something, then we have these reflections that just look wrong. So it looks like this thing is just hovering there in the air. It doesn't really look correct. And the solution to this is environment probes. Now I can create an environment probe just by clicking and dragging. And it's a volumetric entity. So there's a very well-defined volume that we can see. And I just want this thing to line up with the inside walls of my room here. And I'm going to set all the, uh, we have these fade distances underneath the probe properties. We're going to set those all to zero. So everything's lined up exactly on the inside of the walls. It doesn't have to be exact, but it'll look better that way. And then we're going to go up here to tools and build global illumination. And let's see what that does. Well, now the interior of this little room is a lot darker. We no longer have the sky reflecting where it should not. This wall is still pretty bright, and that's correct because it's bright out there, so there is a lot of light coming in. There's light kind of bouncing off the floor here and hitting the ceiling. Now, this looks a little bit odd right here. Why is there this sharp edge here? We can fix that with the fade property. And we can just make that effect gradually fade in. And that looks a lot more natural. Now in this situation we were trying to kind of block out the sunlight so that the sky wasn't being reflected in this interior area. 
but it's not just blocking light. This will also uh, give us an accurate reflection of the environment in that room. So I'm going to create another object here with this really bright emiss emissive material. I'll create another one on this side too. And now let's build global illumination again and see what that does. You can see now the uh, these bright blue objects are being reflected in this metallic surface. You can even see a little bit of a reflection on the floor there. So what environment probes actually do is they give you an accurate reflection of the surrounding environment. So you really want to use one environment probe per room, really. And that will give you the best reflections possible with PVR lighting. Now I've added another room behind our first room. I added this hallway here and then back here I added this glowing wall. So let's see if we can use environment probes to get correct reflections for this whole interior area. I think I'm going to create one probe here and then we're going to create another one for this hallway back here. We'll try dividing it up like that. We'll just start with perfectly sharp edges so we can get an idea of where everything is. And we need to account for this area here, this threshold between, uh, between the rooms. So let's drag him out that way. That'll be okay for now. Let's just see what this gives us. Not bad. Oh, well, that's very nice, actually. Now, this looks pretty good. This gives us very dramatic reflections in here. Uh, but we have a very sharp line here on the floor and the back wall where these two volumes are, are meeting. Let's see if we can use the fade edge parameter to blend these together more smoothly. I think what I want to do is make this fade in, keep it the same... Uh, volume it is right now but just fade it in and our uh, our grid size here is 16 centimeters so if I just type in 0 0.16 that will fade in over the distance that I want and you can see the effect here and then I'm going to do the same thing here with the opposite edge And I'm just going to pull the volume down a little bit so it, it goes into the wall. We can already see uh, that it's blending together more smoothly here. But let's just go ahead and build global illumination again. And it looks about the same. But that just got rid of that sharp edge now, so that sharp edge that we had. So now when something moves through here, when an object travels around through here, it looks very natural. And it's just a nice smooth transition as it goes from one volume to another. We can do the same thing out here. Um, this wall looks funny because we have this section where there's no, uh, no reflection. So let's, uh, let's see if we can improve that. We'll pull this down and then use 0 0.16 for that fade distance right there. And then up here, we'll do the opposite. So that should give us a nice smooth transition and you can already see the effect it has. 
but we'll go back and build global build global illumination again and it really looks about the same there we didn't change it very much when we when we just made those small changes so if we go outside we have very very bright bright lighting from the sky we have lighting coming in and hitting this wall we have emissive light surfaces in here if we go back here there's no lighting in here and it gets very dark almost pitch black and then we have one light surface here one emissive surface that's dramatically lighting up this room if we move an object around inside this scene at every point along the way the reflections look like they should even if we go outside like I just accidentally did this area that's outside looks correct it's reflecting the sky this area that's inside looks correct it's very dark except for this bright wall so this will give you very fine control over the reflections in your scene and that's basically how you set up environment probes now there's one more piece to this puzzle and that's screen space reflections we have some reflections in the environment probe but screen space reflections will reflect dynamic objects and to really show this off I have this uh, very shiny floor material I'm going to make sure static reflections are turned off from this model because I don't want this to actually be baked into the environment probes and I'm going to apply this to the floor that gives me a very reflective surface now go up to tools options and we're going to turn on screen space reflections and th this is using reprojection so it's rendering the last the the reflection based on the previous frame that was rendered which is very good for efficiency in the editor you can sometimes get one frame behind um, and then but if it's running in real time then you don't you don't really have a problem so this will what this does is it will give you reflections based on what's on screen when that data is in is available and when it's not it will fall back on the environment probes and you can see it working here it's very subtle it's it's hard to tell the difference uh, but the 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 helmet here does not appear in the well it does appear there let me actually rebuild the global illumination okay now the helmet does not appear in the reflections and you can see when it's off screen it disappears and it, it's only visible when it's on screen and that's okay because this is a real-time effect but this will give you pretty good reflections and as you can see it's dynamic so if a character is running around here you will see the reflection whatever appears on the screen you will see this works with roughness and it transitions it blends pretty well with the environment probes it's not perfect but I mean if you want perfection you need hardware ray tracing and this is a lot faster than that so this is this is very good for this generation and it's kind of the last step before we go full hardware ray tracing so all of those factors together we have we talked about the sky just the appearance of the sky we talked about the diffuse and specular reflection maps we talked about environment probes and then finally screen space ray tracing or screen space reflections and so hopefully this gives you an idea of how all of those factors work together to produce uh, realistic reflections on every surface and keep in mind this is also kind of a worst case scenario uh, because normally 
you would have a normal map on these surfaces that would sort of break up the reflection and make it hard harder to see. There are artifacts, but when you have a diffuse map and a normal map, it makes it harder to see that, and it just it tends to just look really good. So it makes good artwork look very, very good. Here I added a normal map. It's still a shiny material, but the this really breaks up the reflection, and it's a little bit rougher. So you can see this really, the reflections look really good on this. 